You see, when it comes to the math section, there are two different main ways people approach it. The first way is pretty similar to people riding the bicycle downhill. Like it's pretty easy. You don't really have to put in too much work. All you have to do is just kind of sit there and keep on pedaling and you keep on moving. The second way is where people are riding the bicycle uphill. It's significantly harder. It takes so much longer and it's, you just get tired and tired and tired as time goes by. And the sad news is that vast majority of the people didn't, don't even realize that they are on the uphill. Like the road right next to it is going downhill. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can prevent yourself going uphill and get yourself to the easy road of going downhill when it comes to the SAT math preparation. So if it's your first time here, my name is John Jong. I've been an SAT math tutor for the past 10 years, and my specialty is taking a student who's currently in the four, five, 600 range and take them to 700 plus by their next SAT. And on the recent SAT, we had one student who was able to go from 550 to 780 on the math section. And what I'm going to talk about in this video is exactly what he did. So without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it. So when it comes to the math section, what you have to first know is that there are only 25 different concepts that are tested on the math section. As long as you know these 25 different concepts, you're going to be good to go. You're going to be able to answer every single question, answer them correctly, and get a high score on the math section. But what most people don't know is that there is a very specific order in which you're supposed to study these concepts. You're not supposed to study quadratics first and then go to word problems and go to, you're not supposed to do that. I mean, you can technically do that, but that's exactly how you ride the bicycle uphill. But by learning each concept in specific order, you're going to be riding the bicycle downhill. It's going to be so much easier. You're going to be less stressed out and you're going to be able to reach your target score even faster. So here's what I mean. So on the SAT, there are 25 different concepts, right? So for example, there are the basic concepts, which are going to be fractions, squaring, advanced algebra techniques, so on and so forth. So if you've been studying for the SAT for a while, you know that quadratics is a very popular topic on the SAT. There are at least two, three questions about quadratics for every single SAT exams. And what most people end up doing is they just go to quadratics, they learn everything in there, and they think that, oh, I learned everything about quadratics and I'm pretty good with it. But the problem with that is, the concept of quadratics is not just about quadratics. It's actually made up of multiple, multiple different math concepts. So for example, fraction is definitely a part of quadratics. You, un you need to understand how squaring works and exponents and radical and functions and maybe, maybe, maybe percents. But the problem with that is quadratics concept is not just about quadratics. It's made up of multiple, multiple math concepts. So for example, whenever you see a quadratics question on the SAT, it's not just about quadratics. There's going to be a little bit of fraction involved. There's going to be a little bit of exponents and definitely radicals involved. Sometimes maybe percents involved, but definitely functions involved in there as well. And if you know about discriminant, discriminant also uses lines as well. So what typically happens to most students is they go and study quadratics and they feel good about it and they go straight into the practice exams. And next thing you know, for some odd reasons, even if you know how to do all these quadratics question, you end up missing them. It's so weird. You, you just learn how to solve every quadratics question with whatever you're studying with. But for some odd reason, you end up missing those questions. And one of the main reasons why that happens is because you are missing these supporting side background concepts that you need for these quadratics question. Even if you know how to do discriminant vertex form or quadratics formula, even if you know how to do all those things, if you're shaky on topics like fractions or radicals or how functions work or heck even how lines work, these things are what's going to hold you down. Even if you know how to do the hard part about discriminant, you're going to end up missing the question because you are shaky on the basic of the basic concepts. So, if the, so what you need to take away from this video is that just learning the concept itself, learning the advanced concept itself is not going to be enough. You're going to end up missing those questions when it comes to the practice exams. So in order for you to prevent that from happening to yourself and make SAT prep easier, what you have to do is before you study quadratics, before you study quadratics, you have to first make sure that you have learned all these basic supporting concepts for each of these topics on the SAT. And some of you guys might have already realized by now, but this is the exact structure of my program, SAT Math Accelerator. There is a very specific reason why we have quadratics chapter before all of these things. There's a reason why we touch on basic concepts like this before we move into the functions chapter. And before we go into more of the advanced topics, 
we have to make sure we cover all of these things as well. Otherwise, what's going to happen is you're going to learn about, let's say, triangles. And if you're shaky on, let's say, like fraction and exponents and percent is definitely a big one. Even if you learn everything about triangles and master them down 100%, if you're shaky on these basic concepts, those things are going to hold you down. Those questions, they are going to be the exact reasons why you miss those questions. Despite knowing how to solve every single one of them, you're going to get them wrong because of these small things. So make sure you study for the SAT the right way by learning the concepts in the order which they are supposed to be studied. You're not supposed to study these things first and then go back. No, you're supposed to learn the basics and then go to the functions and the advanced topics and so on and so forth. And if you want to get the full list of 25 concepts, what you are seeing right now, you can go down to our Discord server, which is linked down below, and go to our SAT guide channel, and you can just simply click and download and get this full list right here. That way, you will know exactly which order to study for the SAT, and make sure you're studying for the SAT the easy way, not the hard way like most people do, the easy way. So keep on studying, keep on prepping. SAT may seem pretty hard in the beginning, but with the right way and with the right mindset, it's going to be significantly easier and you can definitely reach your target score. So that's going to be it. I'll see you guys on the next video.